What's going on, everyone? It's my final streaming day of a short streaming week. We got a lot to talk about. Updates, a summary of what went down this week, a special thanks to all of you viewers for keeping your cool, and a bunch of other stuff. Today's Street Fighter VI day. I'm excited to jump into the game on PlayStation 5 with my new joystick. All this and more on today's Level 1 Podcast. Alrighty, good morning everyone. Today is Tuesday, the 8th of August, 2023. Of course, I'm DSP and I welcome you here to the show. I hope that you're all healthy, happy, and in good spirits. And if not, hopefully, we can get you there today with some of my content. What is going on? I hope you're all doing well. Sorry it was a short week. I know that this week was a weird one with only a five days of streaming. Uh, usually I do at least six. Next week, you want to talk about weird. Next week, I'll be doing eight days of streaming. That's a real oddity. Usually at most I'll do seven. So next week will be an extended week with a lot of special stuff going on, a lot of fun stuff, a lot of progress in a lot of the games that we've been playing, which is a good thing, obviously. Um, and so I welcome you here to the stream. And I would like to start off today with a special thanks to all of you, the viewers. And allow me to explain what I mean by that, all right? As you know, this month, August is my celebration 15 years as a YouTuber and we've got various things going on in order to celebrate. We've got a awesome throwback playthrough of Grand Theft Auto 5. We now have a second throwback playthrough of Chrono Trigger. Both outstanding things. This coming Saturday night, there's a special tier maker that I'm going to be doing going down memory lane looking at all of the Game of the Year awards that I've done in the last 12 years and ranking them along with you live. That's going to be pretty special. I think that's going to be cool to, to see, gee, what were those games that I thought were so good, and do I still think that they're good, right? Uh, keep in mind, at the end of this month... Hello, Jasper Kitty. What's going on? At the end of this month, to close out the month, we've got a marathon, and it's my anniversary retrospective, where we're going to go down, again, down memory lane, looking at the clips that you guys nominate over the course of this month and reacting to them. It's going to be something special to see everything from my 15 years here on YouTube and to see what your favorite highlights are. I'm sure there's going to be funny events, positives, negatives, all kinds of stuff. But you know what? Every once in a while, it makes sense to look back at the past and, you know, relive those moments for the good or, or the bad, for better or worse, so that you can move forward positively and learn from your mistakes, but also laugh at the things that have happened as well and have a good time. You know, things have changed a lot in the 15 years that I've been a content creator. That's for darn sure. And it's good always to remember those times. And, uh, you know, the other awesome thing about it is I documented all of it. 15 years of my life has been on the internet. And you guys have seen it all. And you can see it all on demand whenever you want, right? Jasper really likes my new joystick. He's looking at it. He's looking at his reflection in it. He's rubbing his face on it. I'm serious. He's rubbing his face all over my new joystick. For some reason, he really likes it. <laughs> I'm talking about my joystick for my PlayStation 5 to play Street Fighter on. How dare you have other disgusting thoughts in your heads. Stop that right now. It's right here. It's my new Canva Obsidian 2 joystick is on the floor next to me. So stop that right now. Okay. Anyway, the reason I bring this up, all right, is because, because this is my 15th anniversary as a content creator and because we're having positivity and special events and all kinds of fun things going on. There is a concerted effort by those on the internet who benefit from my misery to try to create more drama and misery, all right? And I want to say a very special thank you to all of you this week because this week you did not buy into the bullshit, and that's a great thing that people now have seen through all of this nonsense, all right? Just to give you some perspective, in the last week, the nonsense that has happened, okay? So first of all, 
Jasper's going crazy here. First of all, I get donated a mini PC. I never asked for it. We had talked about a Steam Deck over the last year or so, but never once did I say, hey man, I want to uh, uh, you know, donate it immediately, send it to me. Someone out of the kindness of their heart contacted me and said, you know, with the things that it sounds like you can do with a, a PC like that, I want to donate one. And they did. And that's amazing. So immediately, what happens? These people try to make it into a negative, right? Oh, first of all, the PC obviously is a trap. It's a troll thing where someone put in, like, key loggers and stuff. Then, oh, you see, Phil doesn't understand what the PC is. We're going to insult him on his streams because he thinks one thing, but it's another thing. And we're going to try to bait and trap him. We actually have people. So so here's what you guys don't know. but Because I don't talk about it publicly, okay? <clears throat> There's a good 15 or 20 people that are constantly on my streams who are sock accounts from previous accounts being on my streams and they are a group that sit in a discord and they chat with each other all day every day talking about me crapping on me trying to make fun of me trying to find ways to derail my streams and or create drama around me i know that sounds weird to be like no that's that's got to be an exaggeration no it's very true it's very true I, you know everyone knows it we all seen evidence of it uh it's not hard to figure out all right these people are crazy they're obsessed and they sit around literally plotting stuff these are people who in a lot of cases used to be detractors but they would be in the chat and pretend to be fans only over the years then they would reveal themselves every once in a while when they just couldn't resist a, a big insult or derailing the stream or insulting another one of my viewers for various reasons they all have been banned so they come back over and over with sock accounts <clears throat> okay and the thing is they don't think i know it but the thing is there's a couple things that you can always tell number one they all talk the same they all have the same mannerisms, the same sayings. They reference the same memes. A lot of them have the same kind of type that they type the same way. You can tell if it's the same person easily. It's not a big difference to figure this out, especially if it's a regular who's in the chat all the time, always on a sock account. That's number one. Number two, what they don't realize, which I, I've talked about before, is that they don't even like them each other. There's people who sit in their Discord channels and actually tell me about what they're talking about. Like, if they're planning to do something, I know about it ahead of time because people tell me. I don't ask about it. I literally don't even know who these people are. But I'll get emails and messages saying, hey, Phil, just so you know, this idiot is doing this. And just to, you know, prepare yourself because they might try to derail your stream or there might be something going on, with, you know, this or that behind the scenes. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, thanks for telling me. You know, I don't care about it. I don't, you know, I don't follow it. It's good to have the heads up. So what they don't even know is that I know who they all are. All right? And... They consistently get banned and come back and get banned and come back for various different reasons. Like I said, sometimes they would try these drama efforts and things and it doesn't work, so they get banned and they come back with another account. So this week, one of these things happened where an idiot, one of them, this is someone who had already had three previous accounts at least. It might have actually gone back further than that. But this person had purposefully tried to do a, like a, a, a situation where it's a gotcha moment. I got to find a gotcha moment on Phil's streams where I can make him look bad. Right? So I'm talking about this new mini PC that showed up, and I don't really know anything about mini PCs. I, you know, I'm talking about things that people are telling me. I'm getting emails every night. Hey, here's what I think about your PC. I did some research. Here's what I learned. So I'm just talking about that on my pre streams. And again, my pre streams are not meant to be like an end all be all authority informative discussion about any equipment I'm using or anything like that. This is not Linus Tech Tips, right? This is not. <clears throat> digital foundry doing frame rate testing this is just me talking on a podcast to you guys casually all right but anytime that these idiots can try to get someone in a gotcha moment they'll do it so oh i gotcha see you misspoke about this about the pc you misspoke about that about the pc and then because i don't outright address it right now i'm somehow in the wrong right or someone shows up late to my stream and is demanding that i derail the entire stream to go back and talk about a topic about that mini pc that was at the beginning of the stream right so i make light of it i joke around and everyone laughs and has a good time so what do they do oh my god did you see the joke that phil made about a viewer who is trying to give him information about his pc that didn't happen it's the same fucking troll who's been in this chat a million times always good trying for the gotcha moment it's worthless i, I from the moment that that digital or excuse me the moment that the mini pc arrived correct what is the first thing i said i'm gonna hook it up on sunday night and test it for myself and once i test it we'll have the end-all be-all information about this PC. We won't know till I hook it up. We can all sit here and speculate and we can read stats online, but until I actually hook it up and test it and benchmark it myself, we won't know anything. That's the first thing I said. 
So then why are there people coming to stream arguing with me about the power of the PC if it's going to overheat, if it has a fan in it? Who cares? We'll find out when I test it on Sunday. Why? Because these are trolls trying to get you in a gotcha moment. You see? Now, here's the, the truth. Jasper, you got to get down now. You're being silly. Here's the truth. They're trying to basically derail my content, right? Because what I should have done if I was smart, which I'm not. I'm too nice of a guy. I should never entertain their bullshit. I should take their bullshit and say, all right, you know what? Just ban. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Just ban your ass. I'm not going to pay attention to you, right? But instead, I entertain it. I read the comments nicely. I treat them like normal st stream members because I'm trying to be nice and open and maintain a positive atmosphere on my streams. I don't want people to think that I'm hostile to people for no good reason when I very ha well have a good reason to be hostile to these people. They've already been banned multiple times. Um, so basically, you know, they try to turn this into... Oh, see, Phil disrespects his fans, and Phil doesn't care, and he doesn't listen, and then he treats them badly. It's like, none of that happened. Literally none of it. But this is the white noise they try to create, the drama around my streams. So I've completely ignored it, and guess what? Nothing's happened. It's good that I've ignored it, because it was all bullshit to begin with. I tested out my mini PC on Sunday night, and I found out it's okay. It can play some 3D stuff, but not at high settings. You can go around low to mid settings. Like Skyrim didn't look great. Visage didn't look great. They certainly ran. They're playable, but they didn't look good. It's like, well, I'm probably not going to use this thing then to do any modern games. It's probably going to be retro games and stuff like that, which is exactly what I said at the beginning of all of this before a moment of anyone coming on my stream and declaring, oh, it has the capability to do this. It has the capability to do that. It has a fan and it has this. Before any of that, I said, <clears throat> it's just going to be, you know, <clears throat> very basic. That's what it's going to be. And God, by the way, that's exactly what it is. So... Actually, I was right all along, but, you know, you would have known that if you just waited till Sunday night for me to test it. But that's the problem. These idiots, right, who totally want to essentially be jerks and try to derail my content. But that was only one of the things that happened this week, okay? Earlier this week, we sat down on my podcast and we talked about Mortal Kombat 1 coming up and the future of fighting games on my streams, correct? And we're sitting there talking. And I'm like, listen, we found out Mortal Kombat 1 has a beta coming up, not this weekend, but next weekend. People want to see me play the beta. They've already expressed we want to see you play this beta. <clears throat> but then come to find out, the Mortal Kombat 1 beta is not cross-platform. In fact, Mortal Kombat 1 itself will not be cross-platform at launch. NetherRealm has said that they are going to patch in cross-compatibility later on, which means whatever format or platform you buy Mortal Kombat 1 for, you're stuck with the player base on that format until they patch in cross-compatibility, which we don't know when that's going to be. They didn't promise anything yet, okay? So we already know statistically from Street Fighter VI, almost no one is buying fighting games on Xbox. Street Fighter VI had like 80 to 85% of the console player base buy the game on PS5, and only 10 to 15% bought it on Xbox. So can you imagine if I buy MK1 on Xbox and I try to play it on there, I'm going to have like the same people playing me every time. It'll be boring as shit, always playing the same couple of people who are available per region or whatever. It'll be very boring. You don't want to fight the same players every single time you're playing a fighting game, especially a new game. You want to be playing a variety of players, a variety of comp, a variety of characters, and that wouldn't happen if I bought it on Xbox. So we had the discussion, what do I do? Because if I buy it on PS5, that's all well and good. Problem is, my joystick on PS5 is very old. It's a nine-year-old joystick that I've been using ever since the beta of Street Fighter V came out. So when you've used a joystick that long, the components are worn out. It's not going to be as responsive as I want it to. Plus, it's an old joystick. It probably does have a significant amount of input lag. It's not like a modern joystick where they've tried to design that out of the stick. You know, eight years ago actually wasn't that big of a concern. So after having talked about it, basically I presented a, a situation to the, to the audience on my podcast. I said, I'm seriously considering converting all my fighting games over to PS5. Even though we've now been playing Street Fighter 6 for two to two and a half months on Xbox and it's worked fine, I feel like moving everything to PS5 is the better option. That overall, quality of life, having fighting games on PS5 just makes more sense. Games like Mortal Kombat 1, Tekken 8, and others in the future are likely going to have their major player bases on PS5 and this will future-proof me. I won't have to worry about, oh no, it's not cross-platform and now I'm stuck with a, a tiny player base. <clears throat> in addition... Taking a look at availability of components and things, it looked like PS5 had quite a lot of great joysticks made for it that I could probably get a joystick that's top-notch, top of the line, and give me the absolute best controls when I'm playing these games online, which it seems like there's a desire for me to have since I'm doing so well in Street Fighter VI. So I presented 
the case to my audience, if I do a big investment, all right, I would like your support. Meaning, hey, if someone wants to contribute to help me with this, please do. Or if you like this content, please continue to support all of my fighting game streams. The last thing I would want to do is invest a lot, and then all of a sudden the attention dwindles, and now I wasted all that money because I'm not playing fighting games anymore. Or I'm trying to play fighting games, but the streams aren't doing well, so, oh my god, there you go. You know, I, I invested hundreds and hundreds of dollars, and, you know, it didn't go to a good reason. It didn't go to a good thing. I could have put it into something else, right? So, that's essentially what, I, what I've been saying. I never outright asked anyone to buy me anything to get me a joystick or anything like that. Never happened, okay? It doesn't matter what people say or misconstrue. I never outright said, hey, buy me a joystick, man. Never happened, okay? So, over the weekend, I was considering what to do. And I basically made a big decision. I made a big decision over the weekend. I said, you know what? I think I'm going to make the investment. It's a lot of money because it's a, a joystick that's hundreds of dollars. I have to rebuy Street Fighter Six on PS5. I have to get PlayStation Plus, which is, you know, uh, I, I got the, the yearly annual uh, thing, so it's way cheaper if you get it annually, so I paid for the annual thing. And in addition to that, um, I'm going to get Mortal Kombat 1 on PS5 now, so that's coming up. In the next, you know, week, I have to pre-order that. So all that, you know, I mean, all in all, when you add it up, it's over 500 bucks. It's over $500 to do all this, okay? So I said, I'm just going to do it. Let's do it. So I do it, all right? And immediately, when I announce to everyone that I've done this, what happens? My viewers are like, oh, cool. So now you're gonna, we're going to see everything on PS5. You're going to have a new joystick. This is cool. But what do the, what do the haters do? Oh, oh my God, he spent money? How dare Phil spend money? I'm serious. Like, they actually think I'm not allowed to spend any money. Because in their minds, they're still set on me years and years ago being in financial distress all the time, right? Remember, years and years ago when I went through a bankruptcy and I had to hold streams to pay bills. It's true. It absolutely happened. It's documented. It's public. I did it. I had to do it at that time. I was desperate. If I didn't do those things, I wouldn't have been able to make ends meet and keep everything that I have. You know, I was in jeopardy of defaulting on payments on important things. Things aren't like that anymore, all right? And I'm happy that things aren't like that anymore. Things have been getting progressively better every year since then. The thing is, I'm not talking about it constantly because why would I? This has nothing to do with anyone's public business. It's just my behind-the-scenes life, and my streams are what they are, and you support them, and that's that. No one should care about what I'm spending dollars on. It's ridiculous. But that's how these people are, okay? It's absolutely ridiculous. And I've had enough of people trying to treat me unfairly when everyone else, it's okay. But for me, it's not. I can't spend a dollar on anything, right? Even when it's investment in the business. It's not like, oh, Phil frivolously went out and bought a fucking Gucci watch, or, you know, he went out and he has a new car. I'm buying equipment for my content. But that's not good enough. That's not allowed. So the first thing is, oh, how dare Phil go out and, and spend all that money and beg for people to pay for it? Never happened. Literally never happened. Right? And then it's, well, how dare Phil spend that money if he said he didn't have it? Never happened. Didn't say I didn't have the money. Said it's a big investment and I'd like to make it back. I'd like the buy-in that people will support the fighting game content. If you like the fact that I invested in it, please support the streams. So, you know, today I'm doing Street Fighter 6 all day. By all means, please support the stream. To throw a tip, donate some gifted memberships. That will help to give back for all the investment I just did. You understand? That's what I'm saying. I didn't say, hey, someone buy me a fucking joystick and ship it to my house. That never happened. All right? Never. Okay? So, that narrative is destroyed. So now they move on to the next narrative. What's the next narrative? Oh, well, you see, even though Phil invested in his business, that's bad. He should have bought a blood test for his cat because his cat is sick. What? So just listen to this narrative, all right? Last month, I told a one-off story on my podcast that I went to a vet, and this vet was very unprofessional and tried to scam me. I was never invited into the room when my cat was being examined medically. I was told a bunch of stuff about my cat that I had no clue if it was true or not, no evidence if it was ever shown. I was trying to be upsold by this vet who looked completely unprofessional and wasted my time that day. Um, I mean, I told you, if you want, you can watch the podcast, like a month old now, okay? And essentially, I was very upset with the way I was treated this vet, and that was that. Now, what you guys don't know is in the meantime, there's been follow-up. I'm not going to tell you because it's no one's business. We had an actual meeting with this vet not the vet but the company that owns that 
vet clinic. And we talked with the management about it and explained the entire situation from start to finish. And the management agreed with us that this seemed like the entire thing was wrong, that the vet was not doing what they professionally should have done, that it was completely unprofessional. Yes, they were trying to upsell us on a $300 blood test that is not needed on our cat. We were outright told, yeah, you're right, that your cat did not need that blood test. You were being told lies. Because we were told Jasper needed a $300 blood test in order to find out if he has any kind of problems with his uh, urinary tract. No, he doesn't. We, we know this for a fact because years ago, he went to a vet, like four, four or more years ago, he went to a different vet, and that vet did not do a blood test and immediately diagnosed him with a urinary problem and gave him antibiotics. So we know he doesn't need it. And this, the, the, the management of this vet clinic agreed with us that this vet was in the wrong. This was 100% this vet trying to outsell to make money. And they said, number one, you're never going to have to deal with that vet ever again. If you continue to, to have business with us, you will never deal with that vet ever again. We're going to sit down with that vet and explain to them why that was completely in the wrong and make sure they don't treat another customer like that ever again. Right? So we had that conversation with the vet. Now, I'm not going to tell you guys that because who cares? It's none of your business. Who cares about that? Right? It doesn't matter. But these idiots. All right? Literally, these idiotic trolls on the internet actually think that they're vets. And they say, you see, if a vet tells you that you should have a $300 blood test for your pet, you should just do it. And the fact that you wouldn't do that for Jasper, but you bought a joystick instead, shows that you don't love your pet. I'm not shitting you. This is what these idiots are saying and doing. They're morons. They're completely fucking insane. They will do anything to create a false conspiracy theory narrative to try to make me look bad. So they have content to put out. And they've been trying all week long. With ver First, it was the mini PC bullshit. Then it was this joystick thing. Then it was a Jasper thing. It's insane. I had someone come to my stream last night. All right? And contribute and say, I hope that this helps Jasper. And I said, what are you talking about? And come to find out, they actually had watched detractor content and thought that Jasper was sick because the detractors are lying and saying horrible things. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? So all I want to say to you guys is thank you because here's the deal. If you haven't noticed this week, despite the fact that these idiotic people are constantly trying to say negative things about me and my content. None of it has affected me or my content this week. The content's been good. The people are showing up to watch and enjoying. We're keeping the drama out of the chat. And the support's been good. You know, I have zero complaints. Everything has remained great. And I have no complaints whatsoever about anything. I want to say thank you because you've been an outstanding audience this week. With all the white noise bullshit that these idiots are pushing out there, all the false narratives, you have done a great job of just staying here and relaxing and enjoying the content for what it is, all right? In fact, <clears throat> I received an email this morning, and I am i know this is a, it's an amazing coincidence because all this is going on, and all of a sudden I get an email that is so pertinent that I wanted to read it here live on the stream today. And I'm not going to read this person's name, obviously for privacy reasons, all right? <clears throat> so, here you ready? This is word for word an email that was sent to me this morning. Hello, Phil. I just want you to know I originally found you through troll content. I still keep up with some of it here and there. From what I am seeing, you are becoming more and more admirable every day, so allow me to explain. Number one, the fact that they are constantly doing crazy amounts of mental gymnastics and logic jumps to spin new narratives is becoming increasingly laughable with every passing day. Number two, they're becoming more angry and jaded as their narrative continues to fail and negatively affect you or sway people away from supporting you. Number three, the content you put out is some of the most consistent and well thought out content I think I have ever consumed. I will say, I appreciate that comment. That's very subjective. Personally, I don't think that I'm hot shit. I don't, but it's nice to know someone likes the content. And number four, you clearly care about what your viewers think. The trolls and LARPers, I don't know what he means by LARPers, think it's cool or funny when they persuade or trick you into playing something that your general actual fans probably wouldn't care that much about. In reality, that shows that you're thinking about your fans and viewers to a greater extent. It was your consideration, or excuse me, your considerate nature that they're just taking advantage of. I'm loving the content. If you don't know what he's talking about, by the way, or she, because I don't know, um, it's like when I do a poll. So I'll do a poll 
and the poll will be, hey, you know, what game would you guys like to see? And, you know, I get a voting, and then I, I play the game, and everyone's like, well, we don't know why you played that game, because we didn't care, right? And I'm like, well, I polled. Like, all I can do is try to get public opinion. That's the best way to do it, right? But what people say is, whenever I try to do a public poll, these idiots come and they try to skew the poll to the way that they think that it benefits them. Like a game they don't think people would actually like to see, right? Or a game that will only work for one stream and then will fail or something like that. I don't know. Again, most of the time when I do a poll, it's because I actually don't know what's going on. I, just, I don't know what's best for the streams. That's why I ask you guys for your, your input, right? Anyway, um, I'm loving your content. Uh, they, you know, they say that you, you make detractors out of your fans. Well, this is a detra one detractor that you actually made a fan. And I hope that this message finds you well. So, thank you very, very much. I appreciate That's a really nice message. And it just kind of stands to reason, okay, that as long as you stay the course and as long as you don't allow yourself to be distracted by all of the white noise bullshit around you, you can continue to succeed in life, right? And that's my, that is really my philosophy these days. This week, people tried so hard, so hard to derail the content and to make it all about them and the drama they created. And it didn't work. People showed up, enjoyed the content. We didn't talk about their bullshit. And here we are at the end of the week. It's been a great week. Moving forward positively. You know, good stuff. Thank you. So that's why I want to thank you, the viewers. Because those of you who stay away from their bullshit, for those of you who listen to their bullshit, you know, I feel bad. Because I don't create the bullshit. They do. You know, some people genuinely contacting me overnight saying, is Jasper okay? Yeah, he's fine. He's not sick. There's nothing to be concerned about. It's scumbags making stuff up to try to create drama, and people sadly believe it. And I get it. You guys love Jasper as much as I do. He's a cute guy. He's on the streams. He's a great part of the content. He's a great part of my life. Like I said, I, I, think, I think of him like a son. I want him to be a healthy, a healthy cat, and he is. Thankfully, he's a healthy cat. Trust me, if there was something wrong with Jasper, we would be at a vet. Probably not that vet that just scammed us, but we would be at a vet or an emergency clinic or whatever it needed to be. In fact, we've done that before. One time we sat at an emergency clinic for five hours. Just saying. Did you know about it? No, because I don't want people to be concerned. But, you know, shit happens. So, please, don't entertain nonsense, all right? And I'm going to do my best, okay, to make sure that the nonsense doesn't permeate my streams and my content. And what do I mean by that? If I see someone who's trolling, if I see someone who I know is a sock account, if I see someone who I know is trying to derail in a toxic way, I'm going to moderate and I'm not going to say anything. I'm not going to bring any to anyone's attention. I'm not going to say, oh, fuck you motherfucker in the chat and ban them. I'm just going to say, ban and buy. And I'm not going to say a word, okay? That way, it doesn't derail the content. Because I think what happens is when I do that, then, oh, that's the rise that people are looking for. Oh, I got the reaction. So I'm not going to give them that satisfaction. I'm going to see it. Okay, bye. Bloop. Done. And I continue on. And we don't pay any attention to the nonsense. And I'm going to say this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. If you see me moderating, don't ask why someone was moderating. Because number one, it's actually none of your business. It's not your business. It's mine. And number two, you're giving attention to the trolls by doing that. That's exactly what they want. They want a discussion over it. Okay? So please, understand, there's a reason why I'm doing things the way I'm doing it. You know, we get newcomers who come into the chat all the time. Just the other day there was one. He says, wow, Phil, you know, I'm a newcomer to your content. I can't believe you have 24-hour sub mode on your chat. Do you understand how deterrent that is to newcomers? And I said, I completely agree with you. But you don't know what we've been through. You weren't here for that first month when I came to YouTube two and a half years ago. And how the trolls came in here with bot accounts and were ridiculously spamming the chat with toxic stuff till we got the sub only mode. And the moment we did, it put an end to all of it. It's much better to have to wait 24 hours and then be able to talk in a nice environment than to have to sit here in a toxic environment where 90% of the people talking are bot idiots spamming gross stuff. So it's the thing. People don't get it. And that's fine. You don't have to get it. I've been doing this now for two and a half years full time on YouTube. I know how it rolls. So understand, I, I kind of know what I'm doing. Sorry that things get derailed. Sorry that idiots try to create white noise narratives outside the streams. If you just stay here with me and you chill with me and we have a good time together, none of that shit matters. Don't watch the bullshit periphery around on YouTube. The idiots getting clickbait views and being toxic. In reality, none of it should exist. But YouTube allows it. 
They say, sue those people to stop them. Oh, yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be Mr. Frivolous Lawsuit, and I'm going to slap lawsuits around on every idiot on the Internet who benefits from making fun of me. No, I'm going to sit here and make good content for my viewers. That's all I care about, okay? Now, there's something else that I want to say, all right? Some people have actually reached out to me recently and said, you know, Phil, with all the people on the internet who make fun of you, why don't you give it back to them, right? In particular, there's one person who just contacted me who wants me to basically make fun of Review Tech USA, who is someone who always is on my case, always watches my content to make fun of me, right? We know he's one of the worst people when it comes to let's make fun of Phil and benefit on his misery. We know this, correct? So they said, why don't you give it back to him? Are you aware that recently he's been in hot water aren't you aware that he's in the same situations that you've been in the past but he didn't learn from your mistakes he's making the same mistakes you did and people are actually saying that he's like you from the past and insulting him in this manner and he's having breakdowns over it why don't you react to that here's a someone actually said here's a montage here's a, a a 25 minute montage explaining this whole situation of how he over promised and under delivered and his fans called him out on it and instead of actually responding in a level headed way he basically exploded on the fans and insulted them and called them virgins and losers and all of this right why aren't you doing a live react to that right now why don't you give it back to Rich alright <clears throat> I'll tell you why I don't give it back to Rich because I don't care because I don't want to sit on the internet and be someone who attacks someone else who benefits off of their own misery, I want nothing to do with it. That's not me. That's never been me. How, when have you ever seen me do a, a whole stream where all I'm doing is tearing down someone else? Right? No, I won't do that. Why would I do that? I make what I feel meaningful content. Okay? And <clears throat> I hope that you guys understand that. Every once in a while, someone brings something up <clears throat> as, as a silly thing. Yeah, I'll take a little joke. I'll make a little joke about Rich sucking a cucumber or whatever, right? But I'm not someone who's going to sit here and wallow in someone's misery. Because to some people on YouTube, when someone else is having a bad day, that means it's their payday. It's a good day for them when someone else is miserable. Not me. For me, I wish that everyone would always have a good day. I mean that too. I want everyone to just have good days. I don't want anyone to have a miserable day, a drama-filled day, a hateful day. I just want everyone to move forward with their lives and have a good life. If everyone was happy around me, then no one would want to tear me down anyway because they'd be happy with their lives too, correct? But that's the problem, is that it's not happening. So what do you do? You jump on the misery of others and you benefit from it, right? <clears throat> that's not me. And I don't want to be like that. I don't ever want to be like that, all right? Listen, this last couple of weeks, yeah, I stuck it to LTG. Why did I do that? Because he ridiculously insulted me. My looks, my work ethics, my, the looks of my stream. He insulted everything. He just went off for 10 minutes completely unsolicited. He had no idea what I had said about him because I had actually said positive things about the guy and had one or two genuine questions about things about his streams. He didn't look at what I said and instead he just believed I had said toxic shit and he sat there for 10 minutes trying to destroy me on his stream. I have every fucking right to clap back at that, which I did. And I even laid down a nice challenge that would have benefited both of us, and he pussied out like everyone knew he would. And now that opportunity's gone, and that's that. I'm done talking about LTG. I'm not going to keep harping on the guy. I don't care about the guy. He's a nobody. He's a fucking insignificant fart in the wind when it comes to content creation. Why do I fucking care about LTG? In fact, I'm going to say it right now, outright. Stop bringing him up in my chats. Stop talking about the guy. He's never going to entertain anything when it comes to me. He's afraid. He already got completely destroyed by Visa in 2014. He's so deathly afraid of being utterly destroyed again. He's never going to entertain anything of any kind of challenge or anything. So don't even waste time. There's a, it's a complete waste of everyone's time bringing this guy up. All right? I had enough of people bringing him up because it, it gets nowhere. It just spins wheels and nothing happens. So why spin wheels? So, I'm done talking about him, <clears throat> okay? I'm not, I don't care about him. Stop bringing him up. I did, for admittedly, for a couple of weeks there. I razzed him. The opportunity's gone. It's his fault. We move on. It's done, all right? I'm not going to sit here and, and make fun of LTG constantly. I'm not going to sit here and make fun of Rich's misfortunes because he had something going on that's similar to a situation that I had many years ago with Patreon. I, I don't care. I have nothing to do with any of this. 
I'm here to make my content, my positive content. That's it. You understand? So people are constantly trying to pull me into their shit, right? Well, if we can't make Phil have drama here, let's have Phil create drama there. No, there's no drama. No, really. I mean it. I don't care. I want nothing to do with any of you. <laughs> any of you who want drama, I want nothing to do with you. I'm done with that nonsense. I don't want to hear about anyone. Oh, what about this person talking about you? What about this person? What about that? What about... I don't care. Let them all sit there and jerk each other off until eternity, right? Let them have the biggest drama orgasm all over the internet as much as they want. And you can be as dumb as you want to watch their content. If you so believe it's entertaining, go for it. Melt your brain away and become a zombie watching crap. I don't care. I'm here to be positive. I'm here to enjoy, right? At the end of the day, when you take a look at the body of work that someone's put out on YouTube, okay? You're going to look at all the content I've put out. And I, wow, Phil's put out so many playthroughs. Phil's done a body of work with podcasts. He's done game reviews. Look at this fun, you know, these React projects he's done and all this. And you can go back and watch, and it's all meaningful content. Or you go watch someone who is drama, some drama guy making fun of people all day. How is that pertinent? And the question is, it's not. It's only pertinent in the moment. Once that becomes old news, none of it matters anymore. You know, a few months ago, the hottest thing to do is make fun of DK oldies, or the hottest thing to do is to make fun of this particular person on the internet. But that all, it's all waning. It passes. None of it's pertinent anymore. So once you get that immediate attention for the drama, it goes away. My content is universal. You can watch a playthrough I did in 2010. You can watch a playthrough I did yesterday. You can watch a review I did five years ago. You can watch a stream I did 10 years ago. It's all still pertinent. It's all still fun. You can still laugh. You can still have a good time. You're not saying, what the fuck is that that he's talking about? I don't understand the reference. Yeah, because it was drama content for that day. You're not going to understand the reference years later. But a game playthrough, you will. You see the difference? Meaningful versus bullshit. My stuff will stand the test of time. People will be watching my content for years to come. If I disappeared from the planet today, you'd still have meaningful Dark Side Phil content to watch, right? If one of these drama hounds disappeared today, nothing would change. The planet would be exactly the same. You know, no one would miss it because all they're doing is making content for the day and none of it, and you would never watch their body of work. Who would the fuck would want to watch a drama video from one of these guys from 10 years ago? No one cares about that shit. And that's the difference. Even though I'm small time, even though I'm 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 a, I'm a little a little you know, little guy, I'm grateful that you guys keep me pertinent. You guys allow me to do what I love for a living, and you ignore the drama and the bullshit. Thank you for that. This week could have been a really stupid week of everyone constantly derailing, and instead it was a great week. Everyone enjoyed the stuff. I was so pleased with how this week went. Really, it could have went way worse, and it was so nice, and I was very happy with how this week went. Oh man, look at this uh, this cat on his deathbed sitting on my ch my uh, lap right now. Oh my goodness, he's <laughs> he's so bad off, guys. Let's rush him right now for a blood test. Oh man, we gotta get him out the door right now. Wow, really debilitating disease and, and uh, horrible things going on here. <laughs> Unbelievable. Anyway, <clears throat> so thank you all for that, and I I wanted to open the show with that today because I felt like that was very pertinent to do. Because now that we've dispelled it, we can move on from the nonsense, okay? And we don't have to talk about it anymore, all right? And understand, that's why I don't talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I don't bother with this bullshit. I don't. Why would I bother with bullshit? There's no reason to bother with bullshit. We have important things to do. We're backlogged on things to do, right? So let's talk about those things that we have to do, shall we? Jasper, you're a nut. He's purring on my lap now. He's, he really loves this rubbing I'm giving him. <laughs> Jasper. Purr into the mic. Let's hear them. Purr into the mic. Go ahead. Purr into the mic. Can you guys hear it? Do you hear the purrs? Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> you can't hear it too low? Oh, all right. All right, buddy. <clears throat> Onto the floor. <clears throat> okay. So, <clears throat> let us now get to the pertinent stuff, shall we? Now that we've gotten the baloney out of the way. All right. So, so here's what I will say. Okay. If you like the content I put out, please support it. If you like the fact that I'm now dabbling in a mini PC for more variety of content, please support those streams. Okay. If you like the fact that I'm upgrading my setup to play fighting games at a better capacity, that I'm going to be playing Mortal Kombat 1 against a bigger 
player base now, and I vested in a better joystick. If you like all that, because you like the content, please support it. Today, I'm doing Street Fighter. Support the stream. Please do. Help me to pay off what I just, you know, pay, well, not pay off, because I did pay it, but help me to essentially earn back what I just paid for all this equipment, okay? That's all I'm saying. Support the content that you like, and don't support it if you don't like it. If you don't like fighting games, then ignore it, and that's fine. If you like something else I'm doing, come and support that, all right? But that's all I'm saying. Absolutely no one is sitting here demanding anything. You know who's demanding stuff? My haters. Because they're the ones who want to say that I'm saying and doing stuff that I'm not doing to, to create a narrative that doesn't exist, you know? There's no panic mode right now. If you haven't noticed, I haven't done a crazy emergency marathon in, what, three, four years? This is all nonsense. Don't believe the nonsense. And I, I feel bad when people are contacting me saying, I'm so, I'm so afraid for your cat. I'm like, what are you talking about? This happened with several people overnight. I'm like, this is nonsense. It's such a ridiculous nonsense. These people are spreading. People are believing it, and it's really messed up. So don't listen to it, okay? All right. Now, it's time to get to business, all right? So what are we doing today? Today, it's all about Street Fighter VI, although this wasn't my intention, because Capcom decided to do last-minute maintenance on Street Fighter VI last night, all my Street Fighter VI content had to be pushed to today, okay? So what are we doing today? First of all, PlayStation 5, Street Fighter VI for the first time ever. You have never seen me play it on PS5 before. You're not going to see much difference. It looks exactly the same, okay? But I'll be playing it on the platform where more people are playing it. And this is the first day I will be using my new Kanba Q7 Obsidian 2 joystick. As I unboxed it yesterday, here it is. I'll be using it for the first time. Now, I will openly admit I played a few casual play matches, all right, to test it. What I discovered is the buttons seem really good. I like the buttons. However... The joystick is definitely different than the joystick that was on my previous Xbox joystick. It's, it's very tight, meaning the other one was like real loose, and this one's tight. So what it is, is I, number one, I kind of need to break it in, and I need to get used to it. I'll give you an example. <clears throat> I was going to do Blanca Balls, and when I went to do it, I was getting an aerial Blanca Ball. So I thought I was just holding back and forward plus punch, but the game thought I went up back forward plus punch. So he jumped and did it first. I was like... Why is it, and it happened a few times. It wasn't like once. It was like a few times this happened. I was like, it's a little weird. I wonder why that's happening. And then also, just trying to do like a, a, a drive rush sometimes is getting, it's a little difficult, but I think it's because I need to break in the stick because again, it's a little, it was looser to do it on the other joystick. How do you drive rush? You hold the two middle buttons and you tap forward twice. I was trying to do it and I was just getting a parry. I was like, oh, why, why no drive rush? So I think I, I got to get used to it or I got to break it in or both. And that's fine. It's a brand new stick. That happens. You got to get used to it. All right, and I will in time. This is because it is a tighter stick. It's gonna actually react better in time once I get used to it. But I have to get used to it, and I'm not right now. Okay, so uh, we shall see what happens today. What I think I will do is start off with one or two casual matches just for practice, and then we'll jump right into ranked. We'll do placement matches for Blanca in ranked on PS5, starting over. Hopefully I do well in the placement matches. That'll get me into higher rank, like at least hopefully Diamond. And then we can just play Diamond matches all day long and try to get Honda power leveled through Diamond. The goal is to get Honda back to Master soon. Don't know how long it'll take, but that's the goal. Okay, so we'll see what happens and, uh, you know, and go from there. All right? So that's today's daytime stream is Blanca on PS5, trying to get him as ranked as high as I can and also getting used to the new joystick, which it's going to take some getting used to. Okay? Now tonight's late stream. 6.45 p.m. Pacific time, it's community night, community lobby night in Street Fighter 6. This was supposed to be last night, but we had to delay it when they decided to take the servers down for maintenance. So, community lobby night means it's an open lobby. Anyone can join it. I'll create it. I'll password protect it live on stream. You'll search for Just like it's not going to be any different when I did it on Xbox. It should be identical, actually. You search for DSP Gaming. You have the password. You should be able to join it. Now, I set up the PS5 version identically to how I had it on Xbox, including pop-up messages and all the like. In fact, I even had like my Capcom ID and everything is, is linked. Everything should be appropriately linked at everything. I hope, you know, we'll find out today. When I boot the game, we'll see. I should not be getting pop-up messages and shit on the screen. I hope that it works. If it works, great. If not, well, then we got to figure it out. And we will. We figured it out on Xbox. We'll figure it out on PS5. All right, but I think it should all be set. It should be working. Like I said, Capcom ID is linked. 
and all the settings in Capcom ID are the same as they are, you know, they're all the same. And I, you know, turned off all those stupid clan pop ups and all that in the game. So everything should be identical. All right. If it doesn't, I don't know. What we might have to do is go into PlayStation settings. Are there additional settings in there I need to mess with? I don't know. But I, it should be all right. We'll find out. All right? I apologize in advance. I can't fully prepare for this because there was no way to test it until I was live on a stream. All right? There was no way. So we'll find out live today what happens. Okay? Um, but it's Street Fighter Six all day long today. All right? Serious business ranked with Blanca first stream. And then tonight, Community Lobby Night. I'm off from streaming tomorrow. When I return on Thursday, it's GTA V on the main stream and more Chrono Trigger on the late stream. Last night, Chrono Trigger went really well. I had a great time with it. We had a decent audience for a late night stream. We had, you know, good support. It was all good. I had a great time with this classic. If you haven't seen the videos yet, I urge you to watch them. I know it's an older game, but it's actually one of the best RPGs ever made. And now I'm doing it in an interactive setting with my audience with better a better setup. Like when I played this 10 years ago, I was just using an emulator. Now it's actually the Steam version that's widescreen and the, everything's redesigned to be better now. It's really fun. I'm having a great time with it. <clears throat> And the audience seemed to really enjoy it. A lot of people who tuned in had never seen the game before. You guys are in for a treat. If you've never seen Chrono Trigger before, it's one of the best RPG plot lines ever made. Seriously. It's ridiculously good. So, I hope you will join me for that on Thursday night as it continues. Now, this coming Friday <clears throat> will be Friday night, or, uh, excuse me, Street Fighter Friday, meaning Street Fighter 6 all day long. However, here's what's going on. We're going to do the Level 1 podcast, but then... Around 12, 12, 30 p.m. at some point, I'm going to be interrupted, all right? It's going to be an interruption that could be short or it could be lengthy. I don't know. I'm going to, I'm going to guess an hour, but I could be wrong. I don't know exactly how long the interruption will take. But <clears throat> what's going to happen is uh, I'm going to have to turn the stream offline and take care of business. And then when it's all taken care of, I'm going to tell you guys, hey, guys, I'm coming back. Let's do some Street Fighter multiplayer. All right, so the Street Fighter 6 stream on the day stream on Friday will be shortened depending on what happens with this interruption. And I hope to have it done as soon as possible, but if it takes longer, it takes longer. I don't know. We'll find out and go from there, and uh, I'll let you know. And then we'll come back up and running, and we'll do more gameplay. But all day Friday will be Street Fighter 6. So <clears throat> even if we end up missing out on a couple of hours of Street Fighter 6 on that early stream, we'll still have a good amount because we'll still have the night stream, Friday Night Fights, okay? Okay. Then Saturday, the day stream will be GTA 5. We have canceled the Project 7 event. We're not doing it anymore. People didn't seem interested. I lost interest. We're not doing it. So it'll be GTA 5 on Saturday. Saturday night will be the special tier maker event on DSP Reacts where we're going to count down and rank the game of the year picks that I had done over the last 12 years. We're going to rank them and the runners up in a countdown. 24. What are the best of those games? What stood the test of time and which ones suck now or we don't talk about anymore? We're going to rank those together. That's going to be a very special tier maker. I'm excited for that, okay? <clears throat> then on Sunday, it's React Day. So it'll be DSP versus the Internet React Show. And then Sunday night will be Chrono Trigger. And then Monday will be Street Fighter VI and we'll balance that out with something at night. Now, what should it be? It could be Community Night, right? Or it could be World Tour. We have options. And that's the thing. I'm actually going to be streaming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week. So you're going to get two more Street Fighter VI ranked streams, two more GTA V major story streams, and you're going to get Chrono Trigger at night and some balance there with variety as well. So it's going to be a really long streaming week, okay? So I hope you'll join me all next week for great content. The one big event to plan for is the end of this month, Saturday the 26th, that is my 15th anniversary retrospective marathon. On DSP Reacts, we're going to go down memory lane. You guys have nominated your moments and you're still nominating. Please keep doing so. How do you nominate your favorite moments from my history? Check out the community tab here of DSP Gaming. If you scroll down, you'll see the first week of this month I made two posts. One for members and one for standard viewers. <clears throat> People are posting up their favorite moments there that we're going to actually go through in a... In a playlist and watch together and I'm going to react to all of those on that day in a marathon setting there's also going to be food my wife is going to make for that day there's going to be some drinking yes I'll take some shots that day and stuff like that it'll be a fun chill interactive marathon experience I can't wait I really can't I like these retrospectives we haven't done one in two and a half years so this should be really fun okay <clears throat> cool all right um that's really all I have to say today now, one final thing, and then we'll get to shout-outs. I 
just want to double check to make sure I didn't have any news articles for today. I don't think I did. No, I didn't. Okay. Um, you may have noticed we had a big dip in members. That's correct. We had a big dip in members because there was a big membership bomb last month. It expired. Okay? So, if you want to support the channel, a great way you could do it, in the next several weeks, we're going to have <clears throat> a good amount of attendees for Street Fighter, for GTA, for Chrono Trigger, for special events. Consider gifting some memberships to the channel. All right? It helps the community out. Not just helps me out. This helps everyone else out, too. And people really enjoy having those memberships. You get access to all my emotes. You can talk as much as you want and chat without the slow mode limitations. Um, among other things, there's so many cool benefits you get for being a channel member. All right? So please consider gifting memberships to the channel. If you're someone who had a membership and it expired, consider renewing it. The memberships are awesome. You get a lot of cool benefits here for being a member. That's income that helps a lot. It, it's consistent income every month that helps out. And, you know, to see a dip, yeah, it sucks. But it happens. You get This is what happens. <laughs> it's like this. And by the way, I fully believe that once the fall gaming season hits and we get a bunch of new games out, people will come, be coming back to the channel for stuff like that. You'll see it go up again. And then it'll slow down. It'll go down again. It, it's not a huge deal. All right. But please consider it. And, uh... Thank you to anyone who becomes a member or gives memberships. I really appreciate that. Thanks for supporting the community here. Fair enough? All right, guys. Let's get to shout-outs. Let's start on the YouTube side of things today. We start off this today with Movie Maniac, who did a super chat and says, Who the hell do you think you're talking to, Phil? I am talking to my viewers. That's who I'm talking to. Thank you for the super chat. Adam did a super chat this morning. Thank you to Adam for that. Prisoner did a super chat. He says, it's $25 for a Street Fighter VI Ninja Turtle skin. You're serious? It's $25 for a Ninja Turtle skin? Really? And there's no way to just earn it. You have to buy it with those coins? Is that what you're saying? If so, that's absolutely insane. Holy shit, who would spend $25 for a Ninja Turtle skin? And by the way, you can only put it on your avatar. You can't even put it on a character and play ranked. It's only for your avatar character in World Tour or the Battle Hub. That's it. So, that's pretty insane. <laughs> All right, well, good to know. Maybe we'll take a look at that stuff later today. Uh, Sweets, re their membership for 10 months. and says, love to Jasper. Happy birthday to Jeff. Jeff Olivario. I don't know who that is, but okay. Happy birthday to Jeff, and thank you, Sweets, for re-upping your membership. Connor has done a super chat and says, there's only a narrative if you talk about it. That's not true at all. I, Connor, I wish that were the case. I'm serious. I wish it were the case that there's only a narrative if I mentioned it, but that's not the case. When I <clears throat> haven't said a word about anything, and I've got people coming to me through private messages, through behind-the-scenes contacts saying, Phil, is Jasper okay? We heard the worst. And I'm like, what are you talking about? No, he's fine. There's that. It's not my, the problem. Is it's not my narrative. It's a narrative that's created outside of my content. So I have to dispel the toxic stuff that these idiots say because people actually get concerned. You understand? I wish. I wish that if I said nothing, that the whole thing would go away. But sadly, that's not the case. When people are actually saying harmful things like that, that could hurt people. So I want people to know that that's not true. All right, <clears throat> Mister Game Master. To the Super Chat, he says, thoughts on the Red Dead thing that everyone hates? I already talked about it yesterday. Check out yesterday's podcast for my explanation of that. Or it was two days ago. We talked about it already when it was revealed that it's absolutely a nothing burger, as they say. Thomas Sawyer to the Super Chat, and he says, here's some support for the new game controller. Well, thank you, Thomas. I appreciate that. Let's get you up on the leaderboard because you are the latest Super Chatter. <clears throat> thank you so much. And Big Mac became a member this morning. So thank you very much to Big Mac. So by the way, guys, as you can see, I'm at 475 members. I have a goal. I want for the end of today, the whole streaming day, so this first stream and the night stream community night, I have a goal to hit 500 members. I know we can do that today with the amount of viewers we're going to have and the amount of people who like fighting games. If you support the fact that I'm investing in this and upgrading my setup, please become a member or give memberships today. Let's hit 500 members by the end of today. We can absolutely do it. I, I have no qualms about it. No, I know we can hit this by the end of today. So please consider it and please support. Let's get that going. Let's get the community going. All right? Awesome. <clears throat> okay. Now, let us get to tips. Big Baba Phil just gifted a membership. 
Who did it go to? My Ruin. Congratulations, My Ruin. And thank you, Big Papa Phil, who immediately acted on that initiative. And now we're up to 476 and climbing. Thank you, Big Papa Phil. Dan the Man just gifted 10 memberships. Look at that. What did I say? 10 memberships. Let's see who gets them. Eddie Chill. No Sleep Real Vibes. Eliza Pancakes. Meatball Man. Original Recipe. Drew. <clears throat> Cracker Jacks. Hardcore Fan. Adrian Elizondo. Alex C. Congrats to all of you. That's 10 memberships right there. So now we're up to 586. So by, or 486, excuse me. If you did just receive a gifted membership, be sure to thank the person who gifted it to you. Please be appreciative and grateful. It's a very important thing to do in life. Um, just saying thanks is easy to do, and it makes someone feel good. Um, so there you go. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for your support there. Um, Jade says, uh, sub, I have my Chun-Li shirt on today. Well, you're in your Street Fighter attire for today. Remember, I was wearing my Street Fighter shirts while wearing Street Fighter. Now I purposefully wear looser shirts because I get so heated when I play Street Fighter. Seriously, my adrenaline gets pumping that it's actually good to have better aeration. So I wear nicer, looser shirts now when I play Street Fighter. But it's cool you have your, your shirt on, Jay. Um, <clears throat> Steven just did a $5 super chat. He says, now I am the latest super chatter. Suck it, Thomas. So there you go. Thank you to Steven for a $5 super chat. He's told Thomas, Thomas to suck it. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stop you, but it's kind of rude. <laughs> it's rude to tell another chatter to suck it. I'm just saying. But uh, all right, there you go. Thank you, Steven. Okay, um, let's continue. Thank you for the YouTube side support, everyone. I really appreciate that. Let's scoot over to tips, shall we? So our first tip of the day is a twenty nine ninety nine tip from Game Trekker. So let's play that $20 animation, even though it's technically just under a $30 tip. And I will count it as $30. Okay. <clears throat> Here we go. So, Game Trekker says the following. Well, I definitely didn't see this twist coming. Pushing Blanca to master all over again, now on a different console... It'll be interesting to see how quickly this goes compared to your first run. I might as well add that I am looking forward to seeing you play with more Honda as well. And by the way, yes, I will, because Honda, I was just using on Friday. I did really well. So I would say, first things first, let's play with Blanca. Let's get Blanca working and leveled up here, and then we'll go to Honda. That's probably the order I'm going to do it. And then after that, then we'll probably move on to other characters, like maybe Luke or Lily and characters like that. Okay? So thank you very much, Game Tracker. First tip of the day. Let's see here. I received a dollar tip from Slayer. He says, I want to say today is the 9th of August, which is our Singapore Day of Independence. They're 58th. We'll be having a similar event to the one that you watched for your Patreon Private React the other day, which I did. I watched that Sunday night for him. And he's going to send some responses to some of the questions I had during that Private React. Cool. Thank you very much, Slayer, for the dollar tip. So essentially, the Singaporean Independence Day is incredibly similar to the American or United States Independence Day. They have shows of their military force, they have singing, they have some patriotic stuff going on, their politicians come out and, you know, talk to the people and stuff like that. It's very, very similar. Um, it was actually fun. They actually were doing some weird... Dude, there was a skydiving segment. One of the skydivers busted his ass. And I was... I, I wonder if he got hurt. Because he when he landed, he went splat. Like, he went boom real hard. And I was like, dude, there was no way that was supposed to happen. That was an accident. And I hope that guy was all right, because he looked like he might have broke some bones. I'm like, God damn, I wasn't expecting that. But anyway, that was my private react for Slayer. I don't know if it's on his channel yet or not. Okay, um, continuing on. I got a $4.20 tip from Wumba, who says, What is your favorite R. Kelly song? Now, here's the deal. First of all, I haven't heard an R. Kelly song since, like, the early 2000s, all right? We all know that R. Kelly is now in jail for heinous actions, all right? But in the 90s, his biggest songs were either I Believe I Can Fly, and that came out around the time that the first Space Jam movie came out. It was on the soundtrack, okay? And it was also, um, what's that one? Uh, is it The World's Greatest or something like that? The, hey, I Made It, I'm the World's Greatest. 
Like that one also was like everywhere. You heard it on the radio. You heard it in on TV, advertisements everywhere. That shit was played like everywhere. Okay, I don't know what it's called though. I don't know what the name of that song is. Um, and then in the early two thousands was the song uh, what was it, Ignition, and that one blew up. And then he had the remix to it, and that was when essentially the scandal hit. Where it started to be revealed that what he liked to do was be with younger girls and pee on them. And it was actually um, Dave Chappelle on The Chappelle Show did an entire skit making fun of him. It was a parody of Ignition and the remix of Ignition. Only it was about instead of like, it was like, I want to piss on you, want to pee on you. Only thing to make my life complete would to turn your face into a toilet seat. (laughs) Haters want to hate, lovers want to love. I don't even want none of the above. I want to piss on you. A drip, 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 drip. Gonna pee on you. <laughs> yes, I remember that shit. I love the Dave Chappelle show from back in the day. Chappelle show was so good. It was the funniest shit. So anyway, it was actually, of all people, it was Dave Chappelle who exposed R. Kelly at first for all the horrible things he was doing to women. And then it just got worse and worse over time where people had evidence and now he's in jail for it. So it's pretty crazy to think in the early 2000s, of all people, it was a comic, Dave Chappelle, who actually stuck it to R. Kelly. And then R. Kelly, over the years, the cracks cracked further until there was finally evidence of all these misdeeds, and now he's in jail for it. It's pretty nuts to think about that, right? Anyway, so, yeah. uh, those In the 90s, it was definitely I Believe I Can Fly or that one, The World's Greatest or whatever it was. I don't know what what the actual name of that song is. But those were his two hottest songs, and then it was The Ignition. Then after that, I don't even know what else he made after that because I didn't give two fucks. After Dave Chappelle roasted his ass, I never listened to him ever again. All right. Um, I received a $2 tip from Lady Charisma. Let's see. She says, I was one of the people talking about the PC that day. I want to say sorry if I came off as an asshat. You did not. That tip I sent was trying to clear things up. Listen, here's the, here's the big difference. Okay, someone's like, "Hey Phil, I just want you to know, actually, the PC you got is better than you think." So here's the deal: you were not one of the people, you were not one of those troll idiots who came in here and was literally trying to make me look bad. Again, they're trying to get a gotcha moment. You're trying to be nice and be like, "I just want you to let you know, you got something better than you think on your hands." There, they're coming in here, ha ha. Phil's saying something. We must immediately disprove it. We must immediately make him look like an asshole. And that person spammed my chat nonstop. Until I finally addressed it. And then the next day, spam my chat, I'm not kidding, for 45 straight minutes with the same message. Trying to get my attention when they very well know. I don't do Q&A, I don't do shout-outs, I don't do any of that till the end of the podcast. On purpose they did it to derail the show because, again, they're a troll. There was no good intentions or will there. They were a scumbag, all right? You're different, Lady Charisma. You were being nice. You were actually just trying to tell me something new about that that I didn't know or that I was misinformed. I appreciate that. Do you understand the difference that you're here, you're fine. You know what I mean? Well, that person is banned forever, but don't worry because they're probably already back with another sock account because that's how they are. <laughs> that's that's how they roll. Okay. All right. So there we go. That's the shout out so far. If anyone else contributes... I'll do a shout out. We got a couple extra minutes. Anyone want to talk about anything? What are you guys up to? You got some questions? You want to do a little Q&A? By the way, I will have to do like a, a short break for a restroom break before we jump into the game. And like I said, I'll do one or two casual matches with Blanca just to try to get used to the joystick and then we'll go to rank. Would I consider downloading Specky from Pureform to your mini PC? It's a detailed system specs. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So I don't want to do anything and commit to anything until I know about it. I want to make sure it's not something that's going to like expose a fucking IP address or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Tito Man says, I watched you play Chrono Trigger. Made me want to get it. I'm having fun. It's so good. It's super good. Chrono Trigger, I swear to God, to this day is one of the best RPGs of all time. As long as you're okay with the outdated graphics and you're okay with turn-based combat. If you're okay with both of those things, it's seriously, it's an amazing story. An insanely good soundtrack. And the combat is fun and interesting. It's always getting better. It's such a good game. You know how in certain RPGs, like for example, Final Fantasy 16, you hit the wall with the combat. At first it's interesting, but you get like a third of the way or halfway through the game, it's just the same thing over and over. The combat of Chrono Trigger is always changing because you have multiple party members you could be swapping and all of them learn different crossover attacks and combination attacks constantly. So you're always learning something new or interesting that you didn't know before and it's a really great game because of that. 
When is the Lily Master Grind? Uh, I'll be playing with Lily more, Airhead. Don't worry. Let's be honest. Things are kind of... A monkey wrench was thrown in here. Me converting from Xbox to PS5. So we got to get Blanca. And I'm probably going to play Honda more. But my top four characters right now by far. Blanca, Honda, Lily, Luke. Those are the four I want to focus on right now. I'm actually kind of putting new characters on hiatus for now. While I focus on those four. Once I feel like I've got a good... You know, a good amount of experience and I'm doing good with those. Then maybe I'll try others. But for now, I want to focus on those four. Okay. Eddie Chill says, do you not play Ken because he's flavor of the month? Honestly, I just wasn't too excited for Ken to begin with when I saw him. And now that we know that he's so insanely overpowered, I really have no desire to play with him. No, I shit you not. Yesterday, when I played some casual matches with this joystick for the first time, I'm not kidding you. I played for about 20 minutes. I played seven Kens in a row. Seven Kens in a row. Because Ken won Evo, literally everyone is playing with Ken online now. Unbelievable. We're not using... I already explained what we're doing today. Why are you asking if I'm using Luke today? No, I already said today is Blanca. Today is Blanca. Maybe after that, Honda. And maybe then we'll go to Luke or Lily. We'll see. But for now, today is Blanca. We got to get Blanca ranked back up. Seven fucking cans. It's ridiculous. Uh, why is Blanca my favorite? Because he's the oddball. He doesn't play like any other character. He's unique. I've always liked that about Blanca. He's unique. He's interesting looking. He's got an interesting backstory. All of his moves and everything's unique about Blanca. That's what I like about him. He doesn't play. He's not an archetype. He's not a zoner. He's not a rushdown. He's not a shoto. He's not a grappler. He's his own thing. Every game they change it around too, which is really nice. I just got Essential PS Plus. I don't need any of the premium PS Plus bullshit. I'm just getting it for the online play, and that's it. So I got the Essential Pack. Now, JDTV, at this point, the vast majority of viewers were not interested in hearing about Project 7 again. You know, I talked about Project 7 in a retrospective a few years ago. I talked about Project 7 last year when I did the John and Howard React. I think there wasn't much more to add. I thought maybe it would be a little interesting because I haven't done it in years. But in general, the, the feedback, the consensus I was getting from the viewers was, eh, it ain't that interesting. So we're just going to skip that one. It's all right. Well, maybe one day we'll get back to it. But I don't think it makes sense to do it today. Is it normal, normal to have to break in a new fight stick? Yes. Whenever you have new components for any piece of equipment, but in particular for fighting games, yeah. You essentially have to play with it a little bit to get it kind of broken in and used to it because it, it will. Sometimes it'll be stiff. It'll have a little bit of problems malfunctioning until you work it a little bit, and then it'll actually work well. I've, I've always had that thing. Whenever you buy a new joystick or whatever, you got to play with it a little bit to get it to be, you know, broken in, or else you might have some out. You might have some. Well, number one, there's two things. Number one, it actually can have malfunctions because it's new. And it's stiff or, you know, the joystick isn't responding as well. The, the spring inside isn't bent around enough to be responding properly. So you need to use it a little bit. But in addition, for example, my old stick that I was using on, on Xbox was very, uh, was a looser stick. This one is tight. So I got to get used to having a tighter stick. In reality, the tight stick should be better because it should allow me to have faster reactions once I'm used to it. But I have to get used to it first. What is dinner for dinner today? I think we're having uh, tortellini soup for dinner today. I know. Blanca was very close to winning Evo, and he's still not considered high tier, which is funny. I know. It, that's a good question. JDTV said, are you ever going to try the other ball top for this new joystick, the one that's taller? I might. We'll see. For now, I'm going to use the default stuff and see how it works. But there's another top to this joystick. This joystick came with two different tops for the joystick that are different shapes. Maybe I'll like the other one better. I don't know. But I'm going to stick with the default for now. Have I ever pet a monkey? No. I've seen monkeys in real life at zoos, but I've never pet one. Okay. Okay. All right, guys, I think it's time to adjourn. Thank you for a great podcast. Let's adjourn. I'll take a brief break to use the restroom, and then we're going right into Street Fighter VI with my new joystick, okay? Sound good? All right.
And uh, thank you, everybody, for watching the show. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you tomorrow. No, I won't, because tomorrow's my day off. Holy crap, even I'm losing track of time. I'll be back Thursday, and I'll tell you about my day off if there's anything interesting to talk about. I'll probably be talking about my full day of Street Fighter VI and how things went with the new joystick. Uh, I'm excited for a fresh new week of eight streaming days next week, which will be outstanding. Gameplay every one of those days as well, which no, no days without gameplay. That's good. So thank you for watching. Thanks for enjoying. Have a good Wednesday. See you guys Thursday for the next podcast. Peace out.